Aloha, and welcome to Elements Hatha and Flow Yoga for Beginners. My name is Tamal Dodge, and I've been practicing and teaching yoga for most of my life. Born and raised in a yoga ashram on the island of Hawaii, I've enjoyed this ancient art form since childhood. I was the co-founder of the Yoga Collective in Santa Monica, one of the largest yoga centers in the greater Los Angeles area. When I'm not teaching at the collective, I spend much of my time touring the world to share the benefits of yoga with people of all ages. I'm privileged to bring these two yoga programs to you today to help relieve stress, increase strength, tone muscles, cultivate flexibility, and improve overall health. These yoga sessions offer considerable variety for your practice, both in their approach to yoga and the style. The Hatha session is a step-by-step -step breakdown of asana in its static or held form. The use of a strap, belt, or towel is incorporated into this class to enhance the experience, leading you deeper into flexibility. This program is also designed to create breath awareness, relieve stiffness, help detoxify the body, and recharge your circulation. The flow session is a dynamic practice filled with basic but challenging postures taken from Ashtanga Yoga and woven into seamless sequences that help build cardiovascular strength and stamina, aid in weight loss, tone muscles, and improve mental focus. These two programs are perfect to practice individually or complement each other in the same day. Some of you may gravitate toward one of the programs over the other. If so, I encourage you to enjoy it. However, if you choose to challenge yourself by engaging in both classes, the combination will create a wonderful balance in your body. Remember to honor your body's needs. Feel free to take breaks at any time according to your own intuition and resume when the time is right. Yoga isn't about pushing yourself into injury. It's about finding clarity between your body, your mind, and your spirit, and using these ancient tools to realize your optimal potential. So if you're ready, let's roll out our mat and begin. Namaste. For this program, have a strap, belt, or towel nearby. Start by standing with your feet together in Tadasana, palms facing out. This is mountain pose, the fundamental posture for all practices of yoga. This will give you strength and stability. Take your attention inward, setting your gaze or drishti. Yoga is about harmoniously integrating breath and movement, so it's good to start with simply focusing your mind on the subtle actions of breath or energy, prana. Notice the breath as it funnels through your nose, passing your throat, filling the ribs and diaphragm. And then carefully observe the exhale as your ribs contract and your belly pulls in towards your spine as the breath makes its way out through your nose. Full inhales and full exhales both through the nose. Nasal breathing helps slow the pulse of oxygen and also taps into the olfactor gland at the base of your nasal passage, hitting your central nervous system, telling it to relax. This gives you a true yoga experience and is one of the greatest stress outlets for your body and mind. Now we're going to invite more energy into your body by engaging in ujjayi pranayama or victorious breath. It is very easy and will add some movement as an enhancement for the breathing process. Take an inhale and start to move your arms up to the sky until your palms touch overhead. As you exhale, lower your arms by your sides. Let's keep it going with every breath slowly. Now try visualizing that you're fogging a mirror, creating an audible ha sound with your mouth open to get the feel. Now big inhales and exhales with a ha sound, but this time with your mouth shut. Breathing smoothly in and out with this hollow sound is something you want to maintain from now until the end of your practice. From here, we'll move into the physicality of your practice. Relax your arms by your sides. Start to lift your toes, letting your feet flex. Lift on the knees, feeling your thighs firm. Start to tilt your tailbone down, and then with every exhale, focus on drawing in your pelvic floor for what is called mula bandha or your root lock. Secondly, draw on the stomach and lift the chest for Uddiyana Bandha, your midlock. And third, tuck your chin slightly in and back so your neck is in line with the rest of the spine for Jalandhara Bandha. Roll the shoulders back and soften the jaw. Pick up your strap, fold it in half, and stand with your legs hips distance apart. If you don't have a strap, use a towel or a belt. Hold onto your strap a little wider than shoulders width and raise your arms above your head. 
Focus on keeping the legs straight and strong and your chest lifted, pulling your biceps in line with the ears. Take a big inhale, and as you exhale, gently turn your chest to the right, keeping your feet pointing forward, twisting deep into your thoracic vertebras. With every inhale, focus on getting taller, and every exhale, go slightly deeper into the twist. Five more breaths. We are gaining spinal elasticity here, reinventing good posture and well-being. Soften the jaw and surrender to the pose. Let's do this on the other side. Take a big inhale, and as you exhale, twist to the left. With every breath, go a little further into the rotation, exploring the range of mobility in your spine. Last few breaths here. Take an inhale and exhale to center. Keeping the arms raised and the thighs reinforcing their strength, take a big inhale. And as you exhale, lean to the right, stretching your left ribs and lat muscles while strengthening and compressing the right side. Remember, only go as deep as your body is telling you to. Breathe deep. We are experiencing a lateral stretch here. This will improve your range of motion and movement giving you grace and ease in your daily life. Take a big inhale and come back to center. And as you exhale, lean to the left. The stronger your foundation, your legs, the more sturdy the pose. So continue to reinforce that action. Last couple of breaths. When things get a little intense, refer back to your audible breath, the ha sound, as a gentle reminder to relax. On an inhale, release. Come back to center and relax the arms by your sides. Bend your knees and slide the strap fold in half under your feet. Hold on to the strap at the ends to start and move closer to your feet at your own comfort level as you continue in this forward fold. Now with your knees still bent, take an inhale and flatten the back looking forward as you begin to straighten the legs. Exhale, fold deep into this Uttanasana or forward fold, bending your legs and flaring the elbows out. Again, inhale, flatten the back, looking forward with the knees straight. Exhale, fold in, flaring the elbows, slackening the legs. Two more, inhale, lifting. Exhale, folding. Each time, only as far as your muscles allow today. Last one, inhale. Exhale. Now we will hold this forward bend for five cycles of breath, getting into all the muscle fibers in your hamstrings. Remember, if you feel any discomfort in your lower back in this pose, go back to putting a bend in the knees. Going deeper doesn't mean better. It's what you're feeling in the pose that matters. So even if you can't fold all the way into your forward bend, just take it at your own pace and you'll be gaining leaps and bounds. Remove the strap from under the feet, but keep it in hand. Bend the knees and roll up to standing. Turn and step your feet a little wider than shoulders distance apart on your yoga mat, three and a half to four feet. The taller you are, the wider the stance. Start lifting the toes and firming the thighs like we did in mountain pose, and draw on the stomach, lifting the chest. Take your right arm and drop it over your right shoulder with the strap in hand. Take your left arm from below your lower back and hold on to the strap. Walk both hands down the strap towards each other until your body naturally tells you it's enough intensity in the shoulders. Something that is common here is to let your right elbow collapse forward. Try pulling it back so that you're opening the shoulder girdle and lengthening the right pectoralis. Take a big inhale, lifting the heart. Then exhale, fold halfway to the floor, just the level of your hips. Start thinking of a plateau with your back, an even surface, so you don't stress the shoulders. This pose, prasrita, is strengthening for the legs and core muscles. 
as you have to keep your abdomen firm to protect the lower back. You're also relieving stress from the shoulders and flushing the muscles of the shoulder region with new energy and blood. On an inhale, stand up and switch sides. Take your left arm and drop it behind your left shoulder. Take the right arm behind the lower back and hold on to the strap. Walk your hands down the strap towards each other and remember to pull the left elbow back. Take a big inhale, lifting the chest, and as you exhale, fold halfway, five breaths. This pose is massaging out all the tension in your upper body, so continue to fill the lungs with that rich prana or energy guiding you into the release. On an inhale, stand up and relax the arms. Now with the strap in one hand, take both arms behind the back, palms facing towards the backs of your legs. Grasp the other end of the strap with your free hand. Reaffirm the strength in your legs as we tend to get tired and forget to keep the alignment strong. Take a big inhale and look up, dropping the head back into the nape of the shoulder blades. Then exhale as you fold forward, drawing the arms up to the sky. Forward bending is the most approachable inversion you can do. Inversion poses are very rejuvenating because your head is below your heart, which rarely happens in the course of everyday life. In this simple fold, you are changing your circulation, decompressing the spine, taking the weight of gravity off the lungs so that you can breathe a little easier. So get in. Last five breaths. On an inhale, stand up. Turn and step to the front of your mat and place the strap on the floor close by. We will now practice a few half sun salutations to get into a rhythm or flow. It's always nice to build a little heat in your practice. Creating warmth in the body makes tight muscles more malleable and a little more forgiving. It will help us get further into our stretches. Stand with your feet together in Tadasana. Take a big inhale and circle your arms overhead. Exhale, fold your body forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, glance out, either climbing onto your fingertips or sliding your hands up your shins to create a flat back. This is called Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise to standing, circling the arms overhead, palms kiss at the top. Exhale, prayer in front of the heart. Let's do two more. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise to standing. Exhale, prayer in front of the heart, samasthiti. Inhale, arm circle. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold and pause here. Step back to the top of a push-up. If you need to modify this, you can always put your knees to the floor. In plank or dandasana, make sure the shoulders are over the wrists and your arms are straight and strong, accessing your triceps. Draw on the belly and firm your core so you aren't swaying in the lower back. Firm your thighs by lifting on the knees, take a big inhale, and as you exhale, lower slowly to the floor. Lie in your stomach, resting the tops of your feet on the mat. Take your strap and hold it behind your back. With a big inhale, lift your chest, head, and legs off the mat so that you're balancing on your hips and stomach. 
Draw the arms back, finding lift through your collarbones and sternum. You're igniting the multifidus and paraspinal muscles that run along your back, which when atrophied are main sources of chronic back pain. Last few breaths here. Take a big inhale and exhale lower down. Place the strap to the side and plant the palms under your shoulders. Take an inhale tucking the toes and lifting the hips as you push back to downward facing dog. In down dog, if you feel your calf muscles are tight and wound up, you can pedal the heels to loosen the Achilles. Otherwise, make sure your legs are hips distance apart and the heels disappear behind the toes. Take a look at the arms and make sure their shoulders distance apart and then relax your neck and head. Look at your stomach as you draw on your belly towards the spine. Firm the thighs and press the hips back to sink the heels and spread the sit bones. From down dog, lift your right leg up and lunge it through your hands closest to your right thumb. Drop your left knee to the floor and slide your left leg back to stretch the front of the thigh, the quadricep, setting up for Anjay Asana. Grab a hold of the strap about shoulders width apart and lift it above your head. Sink the hips forward and focus on dropping the shoulders downward as if gravity was bearing down on them. Breathe deep into that feeling in your left thigh and right hip. Place the strap to the side and plant the palms on either side of your right foot and step back to downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg up and lunge it between your hands. Drop the right knee to the floor and slide it back, stretching the quadricep. Take the strap once again, shoulders width apart and raise your arms above the head, pulling the biceps in line with the ears. Breathe easy. Place the strap to the side and plant the palms on the ground and step back to downward facing dog. From down dog, we will practice kumbhaka pranayama or breath retention. Take a big inhale and hold your breath, bringing the stress in your body to the surface. And then exhale, release. Again, inhale, hold the breath. Exhale, release. Lower your knees to the floor and cross one ankle over the other and sit behind the feet as you swoop your legs through to the front. Extend both legs out in front of you for Paschimottanasana. Lean to the left and move the right side of your seat out of the way and do the same to the left. Take your strap and place it around the feet. Hold on to the ends of the strap, take a big inhale and exhale, pull your chest towards your feet and your toes towards your chest, keeping your back flat. On every inhale, focus on lifting on your kneecaps, firming the fronts of the thighs. On every exhale, relax the legs. This is called active static stretching. It helps you maintain strength while gaining flexibility. It is important to breathe deep here, as the breath will not only help eliminate stress from the body, but also move lactic acid from the muscles. On an inhale, sit up. Straddle your legs wide apart for Upavista Konasana, or splits. Flex your heels and firm the legs. I'll give two options here. 
One, if you have tight hamstrings and hips, simply place your hands three to six inches behind your sit bones, cupping the earth with your fingertips. Take a big inhale, lift your chest, and roll the shoulders back, holding here and breathing easy for the duration of the pose. Option two, if you want to go deeper, walk your hands out in front of you and climb onto your fingertips, pulling your chest forward and leading with your heart so that your spine is in alignment. This will help you deepen the stretch in your hips while maintaining a flat back. We are also isolating and targeting the external hip rotators and diving deep into the muscle fibers in the hamstrings. Last few breaths. On an inhale, sit up and extend your strap around your right foot and turn your torso to face the right leg. Take a big inhale and exhale, fold gently forward while maintaining the integrity of a straight spine. Yoga is something that enhances not only strength and flexibility, but our state of mind. Each pose gives us a chance to meet our challenge and to overcome it. Inhale, come back up and extend the strap over your left foot, rotating the torso to face the left. Take a big inhale and exhale, fold. Imagine breathing into the legs as you relax further into the fold. Inhale, sit up and bring the soles of your feet together and pull your heels in towards your hips. Take the strap and slide it under your feet. Hold onto the strap close to the ankles. Take a big inhale, lifting the chest, and then exhale, fold forward, pulling your chest towards your feet and using your elbows to push the knees down. Breathe deep in your Baddha Konasana, butterfly pose. This pose is about releasing the hips and stretching the outer thighs. These are sensitive areas in the body due to the amount of tension we hold here. The strap or towel is a great tool to help you ease into the stretch at exactly your body's level. Inhale, sit up, move the strap to the side, close your knees together. Make sure you're seated in the center of your mat. Now we'll focus on some static core work that will help give you a stronger center, better posture, and make you less prone to back pain. With your feet planted on the floor and your knees bent, extend your strap around both feet, holding onto the strap with both hands, setting up for Ardha Navasana, half boat. Draw on the stomach and lift the chest. Roll the shoulders back and gently lift your feet until they are level with your knees. Squeeze the inner thighs tightly together, activating your abductors. Keep your arms extended forward. You should feel your shoulder blades broadening across your upper back. Experienced yogis can try straightening the legs up to the sky for full Navasana like this. Breathe slowly and easily here, as it will help slow the process of your thoughts, giving you more stability. Bow pose is not about stretching. Right now, as you hold this pose, you're strengthening your abdominal muscles and the muscles of your back. Take a big inhale, and as you exhale, place your feet back on the ground and remove the strap to the side. Line your back and hug the knees into your chest. Release the left leg straight out onto the floor. Take your strap and extend it around your right foot, holding it in your right hand close to the ankle. 
take your left hand and place it on your left hip, holding it in place. Pull your right knee down by your right rib cage, bending the knee towards the floor and up towards your right shoulder. You want your right ankle in line with your right knee, so not to stress the knee joint. This is called half a happy baby, Ardha Ananda Balasana. Take an inhale and exhale release. Switch sides. Drop the right leg straight to the floor and extend the strap around your left foot, holding it in your left hand near the ankle. Take your right hand and hold your right hip in place. Bend the left knee by your left ribs, revitalizing your psoas and hip joint. Again, make sure the left ankle is in line with the left knee. Inhale, and then exhale, release the left leg. Hug the right knee into your chest in preparation for a gentle reclining twist. Send your right arm out to the right, palm face up. Keep the right knee bent, look to the right, take an inhale. Exhale, twist the right knee across the body to the left. Just to ensure that you really feel the stretch in your lower back and hips, try adjusting your left hip a little more to the right. Breathe into your rotation. Whenever you twist, you are massaging the organs in your body and creating a detoxifying effect. Your breath will help guide this cleansing experience, helping to relax you into this pose versus resisting. Inhale, come back to center and exhale, release. Hug the left knee in. Same twist, opposite side. Left arm out to the left, palm up. Look to the left, take a big inhale. Exhale, twist the left knee to the right. Again, try adjusting your right hip back to the left so that you're getting further into the twist. Inhale, come back to center, and exhale, release the left leg next to the right, setting up for Shavasana. With your feet, knees, and palms turned out, and your face soft. We're going to take you into a traditional method of deep relaxation. Start to curl your toes and firm your thighs. Take a deep inhale and hold your breath. Bring all the tension in your legs to the surface. Exhale, release. Make fists, take a big inhale, and hold your breath, bringing all the stress in your torso to the top. Exhale, release. This last and final breath, take a big inhale, curl the toes, make fists with the hands, hold the breath, pulling the last drop of stress in your body to the apex. Let it go. Let your body rest. This is it. Shavasana is a place of meditation. Traditionally in yoga, you practice the exercise of the asana or postures so that you can clear your mind and relax the body for meditation. 
I will give you a guided visualization here to further your practice. In India, yogis sit on the banks of the Ganges River with an appearance of daydreaming, but they are actually practicing a form of detachment. They are observing everything that flows down the river bank, from lotus flowers to crocodiles. But they are actually practicing being equal poised in everything they witness or see, never identifying with one thing or the other. Your mind is also like a river, a constant flow of images, desires, and distractions. You can be like the yogi in India by right here and now, letting go of all the things that your mind distracts you with and letting them all float downstream. Practice being detached and balanced. This is an ancient tool in a modern application. Breathe deep. thoughts creeping into your mind. Observe them and release them to float away. With each inhale, feel the breath washing through your body, bringing calm and relaxation. Exhale, let distracting thoughts flow out of your mind. Just relax. Start to scrunch your toes and wiggle your fingers, bringing movement back to the body. Roll to your right side, taking a moment of pause. Sit up, take a cross-legged seat, Sukhasana, and join your palms together at your heart. Namaste essentially means, I the soul see the soul in you and I respect you. I grew up in Hawaii and aloha doesn't mean hello and goodbye. It means I see the spirit in your earthly form. These are not only ancient sayings, but traditional guidelines for life and all of our actions, reactions, and interactions with everyone that we carry this deeper respect they are words to live by. Namaste and Aloha. We will begin seated in Sukhasana. Gently come down to your mat with your legs crossed. If you notice your knees are raised higher than your hips, feel free to place a folded towel or blanket under your sit bones to raise your foundation. Place your palms on top of your knees gently pulling in the abdomen and lifting the chest. Half close your eyes and take your focus out of the external perception and bring it into a more meditative realm. Start to notice your breath flowing gently in through the nose and out of the nose, creating a smooth rhythm. This vinyasa flow program will be a little bit different than most others as we will focus on repetition, giving our bodies a chance to create a memory of everything we are doing and familiarize ourselves with each pose. Let's begin with Ujjayi Pranayama, or victorious breath. This breath should be a constant in each asana or pose that follows. Ujjayi breath should be deep and resonant like the ocean rushing on and offshore. Try it now, 
maintaining inhales and exhales through the nose. This will help create internal heat or Agni fire. Now walk your hands out in front of you, bowing over your legs. Keep your neck and head relaxed. Notice the sensation in your hips and the tug through your side body. Start to spread your hands wide on the mat, stretching the fingers and the webbing between the fingers. Sink your tailbone back, creating space in the lumbar spine. No rush. From here, make your way to your hands and knees. You may be able to take your legs straight back, or you may have to shuffle into it. There are no hard and fast rules about it. Once you're on all fours, your hands and knees, make sure the wrists are under the shoulders and the knees are under the hips, creating a perfect table. Take a big inhale and lift your head to the sky, arching your back and dipping your stomach towards the earth, spreading the collarbones for bitilasana or cow pose. Exhale, tuck your chin into your chest, round the upper back, spreading the shoulder blades for Marjri Asana or Cat Pose. Again, inhale, lift the head for Bhitilasana. Exhale, tuck and round for Marjri Asana. Let's do this on our own for another five breaths. Come to a flat back and extend your right leg behind you, flexing through the heel. Take a big inhale, and as you exhale, bring the right knee to your nose, round the upper back, drawing in the abdomen. Inhale, extend the right leg back, finding length. Exhale, bring the knee to your nose, round the spine. Four more with the breath. Inhale, extension through the right thigh and hip. Exhale, knee to nose, creating space in the upper back. Again, inhale, lengthen the right leg back. Exhale, draw the knee inward to the chest. Last two. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Remember the core. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, rounding. Let's meet with the right leg extended back. Lean your chest out like you're jetting forward so that your shoulders are over your knuckles. Take a big inhale. And as you exhale, touch your chin to the floor, elbows hug the ribs like chaturanga. Inhale, push yourself back up. These are ekapada or one-legged push-ups. Let's do two more. Exhale, chin down, elbows in. Inhale, back up. Last one, exhale, down. Inhale, push up. Keep your right leg extended back. Reach your left arm forward in a handshake fashion for chakra vakasana. This is great as we balance here. This pose will challenge your slow twitch and fast twitch muscles. Focus on rooting the right palm firmly into the earth so that you're not collapsing in your right chest and pull the left bicep in line with your left ear. Draw on the stomach, supporting the lower back, and stare at the floor, fixing your gaze on something that won't move or waver. It will help with stability. Take a big inhale, lifting everything. Exhale, set it down. Cat cows, inhale, lift the head, dip the stomach. Exhale, tuck and round. Let's do this on our own for another six breaths.
into a flat back with the left leg extended behind you. Take a big inhale, and as you exhale, bring the left knee to your nose. Inhale, extend the left leg back. Exhale, draw it in, flow freely. The beauty of repetition is it gives you the chance to gain cardiovascular strength as well as finding your own pace. So you can do this fast or slow depending on your mood and drive. Good, let's meet with the left leg extended back. Lean your chest forward, take a big inhale, and as you exhale, touch the chin to the floor, elbows in. Inhale, push up. Exhale, chin down. Inhale, back to the top. Exhale, down. Inhale, rise, and extend your right arm forward in a handshake position. Root the left palm, creating space between you and the floor. Lead with the crown of the head forward so that there is length in the back of the neck, the cervical spine. Take a big inhale, lifting. Exhale, set it all down. Tuck your toes and lift your knees, pushing back to downward facing dog. First, take a look at the hands and make sure they're shoulders width apart. Start pressing your fingertips into the earth so that you can see a little white through your fingernails. Then as a follow-up, root the knuckles and palms deeply into the floor so that your hands are truly planted into the ground. Relax your neck and head and see that your legs are hips distance apart. Draw on the belly for Uddiyana Bandha and push your hips back to sink the heels and spread the sit bones. On an inhale, drift to plank or upper push-up position. You can set your knees down on the floor like this if at any time in the practice you feel plank is too much. Start to lean your chest forward like we did earlier so that your shoulders are over your knuckles. Take a big inhale and as you exhale, lower halfway to the floor for chaturanga, keep the elbows snug to the ribs. Lower all the way to the ground and maybe slide your hands back an inch so that the wrists are directly under the elbows. Take a big inhale and lift your chest three inches off the mat for a baby cobra, Bhuja Nagasana. Roll the shoulder heads back and down. The hips remain planted on the floor. Tuck the toes and let's push back to downward facing dog. We will do this a few more times, finding our rhythm or flow. Inhale to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Last one, inhale to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, or advanced yogis, upward dog, lifting the hips and thighs off the floor and straightening the arms for full extension. Exhale, down dog. On an inhale, draw the hips back, looking forward. Exhale, step to the front of your space. Inhale, glance out, climbing onto the fingertips or sliding your hands up your shins to create a flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, driving your feet into the ground, rising to standing, circling the arms above the head. Exhale, prayer in front of the heart, samasthiti. We will practice a few rounds of sun salutation A, honoring tradition. Inhale, arms circle and reach, lengthening through the side body. Exhale, forward fold, bowing into the hamstrings. Inhale, glance out, igniting the spine. Exhale, step back to plank and lower slow with muscle. Chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, rolling the shoulders back. Exhale, down dog, stretching the calves. On an inhale, pull the hips back. Exhale, step or lightly hop to the front. Inhale, glance out like we practiced. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, Tadasana. Exhale, prayer in front of the heart, Namaste. Last one, inhale, arms reaching, breathing deep. Exhale, fold, decompressing. Inhale, pull the heart forward, lengthening. Exhale, Chaturanga, strengthening. Inhale, cobra, back bending. Exhale, down dog, bowing. In down dog, take a moment to re-invite that meditative atmosphere into your body. Remember, yoga isn't about making everything easy, but it's about finding a calm environment in the midst of challenge, so that whatever comes in our path, we can meet it with the right attitude. On an inhale, draw the hips back, Exhale, step or hop forward. Inhale, glance out. 
exhale, fold. Keep your feet together. Inhale, bend your knees, sit in a chair, and reach your arms to the ceiling. Start by shifting the weight into your heels so that your toes lift up and your knees fall in line with your ankles. It's as if someone was holding onto your hips and pulling them back. Tilt your tailbone down so that you aren't sticking your bottom out. Draw on the stomach and lift the chest, creating length through your torso. Last but not least, pull the biceps in line with the ears so we're not overcompensating in the shoulders. Take a big inhale, and as you exhale, lower your chest on top of your bent knees and take your arms down your ribs. Inhale, reach up to chair pose. Exhale, fold over bent knees, arms down the ribs. Let's do this a few more times on your own, smoothing it out. Follow the inhales and exhales as your cues as you flow through this chair sequence. You should feel a burning sensation in your thighs, glutes, and back, as this is a full body workout. Meeting in chair pose with the arms raised, take a big inhale, exhale forward fold and straighten the legs. Inhale, glance out thinking cobra with the chest. Exhale, step back to plank and lower slow, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Lift your right leg up behind you. Bend your right knee and roll your right hip open to the sky. Come up onto your left tiptoes, getting elevation. Take a big inhale. Exhale, lunge your right foot between your hands, closest to your right thumb. It's okay if you have to scoot your right foot forward to get it into place. Spin your back heel down so your toes are turned out at a 45 degree angle. Pause. Look at your feet and make sure your front heel is in line with your back heel and that your toes are lifting, working the arches in your feet. Then on an inhale, rise to warrior one, reaching to the sky. Take a moment to sink into the front knee so that it is over the front ankle at 90 degrees. This way, you are using bone strength and not so much muscle exertion. Square the hips, letting your right hip extend back and your left hip move forward. Take a big inhale and exhale, open up warrior two. Turn your chest to the left and open the arms like wings. Readjust your feet slightly so that your front foot is in line with the arch of your back foot. Tilt the tailbone down and draw on the stomach, lift the chest, creating length through the torso. Lift the arms slightly higher than the shoulders, but keep the trapezius relaxed. This will isolate the strength into the deltoids, the shoulder heads. Stare at your right hand as you turn your right palm up and reach it up and place your left hand on your left thigh for reversed warrior stretching your right ribs and serratus muscles. On an inhale, come back up to warrior two. Place your right forearm on top of your right thigh. Take your left arm overhead for side angle pose, Parsvokanasana. Focus on pulling your left bicep in line with your left ear and rotate your left tricep, the outer arm, towards the earth. Take a big inhale and come back to reversed warrior, placing the left hand on top of the left thigh and reaching the right arm to the sky. Exhale, windmill the hands to the floor on either side of your right foot and step back to plank and lower slow, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Take a few breaths here in down dog to recoup all of the energy we have put out to properly recharge with our revitalizing breath, prana. Let's lift your left leg up behind you. Bend the left knee as you roll the left hip open to the sky. Come up onto your right tiptoes, getting height. Take a big inhale and exhale, lunge your left foot between your hands, closest to the left thumb. Turn your back heel down and take a glance at your footing. Make sure the front heel is in line with the back heel and that your toes are lifting, establishing flexion in the feet. Then on an inhale, rise to warrior one, reach to the sky. Start squaring the hips and drawing in the abdomen. Relax the shoulders, take an inhale, and exhale, open up warrior two. Readjust the feet so that your front heel is in line with the arch of the back foot. Tilt your tailbone down and under and create a lift in the heart. Turn your left palm up and reach it up as you drop your right hand to your right thigh for reversed warrior. We are lengthening the upper body here and strengthening the lower body, dual actions. 
On an inhale, come back to warrior two, place your left forearm on top of your left thigh, and take your right arm overhead. Try turning your chest slightly to the ceiling here, creating space in the spine. Inhale, come back to reversed warrior, reaching the left arm up and dropping the right hand to the right thigh. Exhale, windmill the hands to either side of your left foot and step back to upper push-up and lower slow. Chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. We are getting into the heat of our practice. It all starts with the subtleties of breath and we are slowly building our foundation, layering asana or poses into seamless sequence of flow. Lift your right leg up behind you. Take a big inhale and exhale, bring the right knee into your nose, rounding the upper back, shoulders over your wrists. Inhale, extend the leg back. Exhale, knee to nose. Let's keep this going on our own for a few more cycles with the breath. Thinking of these as down dog crunches, Every time you bring the knee to your nose, pull in the abdominal wall and firm the core, exhaling all of your air or negative energy apana. Every time you extend the leg back, soften the abdomen and fill your lungs with positive energy or prana. Now let's meet with the right knee to your nose, rounding the back. Without lifting the palms, try stepping your foot between the hands, baby step. You can use one of your hands as a helpmate to get your foot forward. Stay on the ball of your back foot like a runner getting ready to sprint. Take your arms down your ribs. Take the slouch out of the upper back and pull the shoulders, the trapezius, out of the ears. Just like we did in chair pose, we will do here in crescent pose, Anjayasana, finding repetition. On an inhale, reach your arms to the sky. Exhale, fold over your front knee, arms down the ribs. Again, inhale, rise, reaching high. Exhale over your leg, arms down the ribs. Flow freely, igniting the breath. This pose is about firing up the right hamstring and glute muscle while lengthening and stretching your left quadricep. It's natural for your lungs to work a little harder in this sequence as we are getting deep into the cardiovascular. So breathe deeply. Let's meet in crescent pose, reaching to the sky. Take a big inhale. Exhale, hands down, step back to plank, and lower slow, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. From down dog, low your knees to the floor, so you're on all fours. Extend the right leg back and place your left hand behind your head. This may feel a little awkward at first, but we will get the hang of it. This is an inverted bicycle crunch. Take a big inhale, and as you exhale, bend the right knee into your stomach and bring the left elbow to touch that right knee at the center of your body. Inhale, extend the right leg back. Exhale, bring it to center. Let's do this a few more times at your own pace with your breath. If this movement is too much of a balance challenge for you, simply hold the position without crunching. It will still improve your core strength, and as your balance improves over time, you can try the crunching motion again when you feel ready. Extend the right leg back and reach the left arm forward in a handshake position. Take a moment to find your balance. Then bend the right knee so that your right foot points up to the sky and reach back with your left hand and grab a hold of your right foot, toe, or pant leg, doesn't matter, and drive the right foot back as you lift your chest for sunbird pose, five breaths. It's natural to feel off balance or shaky in this position as you're playing with all the subtle muscles in your body that rarely get touched upon. If you slip or get tired in this asana, just take it slowly, less is more. Take a big inhale, lifting everything. Exhale, set it all down. Tuck the toes and push back to down dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now let's balance out the other side. Lift your left leg up, take an inhale. Exhale, left knee to nose, shoulders over wrists. Inhale, extend the left leg back. Exhale, knee to nose. Flow on your own. If at any point you need a break, honor that and listen to your body. Yoga helps you become more in tune with your body's needs, making you more receptive and intuitive to what it's telling you. Last few. Now let's meet with the left knee to your nose, rounding the back. Without lifting the palms, step your foot forward. 
stay on the ball of your back foot and run your arms down your ribs. Think cobra with a chest and seal in the stomach. On an inhale, rise to Anjay Asana. Exhale, fold over your front knee, arms down the ribs. Inhale, rise to crescent. Exhale, over your leg, arms extend back. Last few with the breath at your own pace. You've got it. Let's meet in crescent pose. Take a big inhale and exhale, hands down, step back and lower slow. Chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Lower the knees to the floor, coming to table. Extend the left leg back and take the right hand behind your head, setting up for our inverted bicycle. Take a big inhale. Exhale, bend the left knee into the abdomen and bring the right elbow to touch the knee at the center point. Inhale, extend the left leg back. Exhale, draw it in. A few more with the breath. Meeting with the left leg extended back and the right arm forward, bend the left knee, reaching back with your right hand and grab a hold of your left foot or ankle. Drive your left leg back, opening the sternum and broadening the collarbones. Take a big inhale, lifting. Exhale, set it down child's pose. Sit on the heels and forehead to the earth. It's always nice to take a pause in your yoga practice to set a clear line between the heat sequence and the cool down. From child's pose, take your arms behind your back and interlace the fingers, pulling your arms to the sky. Try getting your palms to touch as you will get more out of this. Keep your head on the floor, lift your bottom off the heels, rock onto the top of the head, and take your arms further. This will flush the upper body with new blood and energy, revitalizing your muscles and cells. Come back to child's pose, sitting on the heels, arms extending forward. But stand on your knees, setting up for camel or ustrasana. Take your hands and place them on your lower back, the top portion of your glutes, fingers pointing down. Take a big inhale and exhale, drop your head back into the nape of your shoulder blades, stretching the entirety of your midline. Keep your elbows in and lead with your hips forward so that your hips are directly over the knees. This will prevent you from stressing the lower back. If you want to go deeper, you can place your hands on the heels. On an inhale, come back up and come to all fours. Sit to one side and take your legs out in front of you. Bring the sole of your right foot to the inner left hip and thigh, setting it for Janu Sursasana. Take a big inhale, reaching the arms up. Exhale, fold over your left leg, grab onto the left ankle, calf, or foot, whichever allows you to keep a flat back and avoid tucking your tailbone under. Lead with your heart forward. On an inhale, come up and switch sides. Extend the right leg out and bring the sole of your left foot to the inner right hip and thigh. On an inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, fold over your right leg. Focus on relaxing the muscles here, letting the weight of your own body and gravity open you up for what is called passive static stretching. It's a very soothing way of creating length.
down and inhale, sit up. Bring the soles of your feet together and bring the heels halfway to your hips so that there is about six inches between your heels and your hips, setting up for a variation of Baddha Konasana. Take your hands out in front of you and walk your hands forward until you feel it is deep enough. Let's breathe here for five. Yoga is about balance. We created heat and strength to take you to this point of opening and releasing. We are counterbalancing everything. On an inhale, sit up. Close the knees together and hug the knees with the arms. Place your forehead onto the knees and roll onto your back. Start to circle your knees one way, massaging the hips and lumbar. Then circle your knees the other way. Keep the knees into your chest. Extend your arms out to the sides, palm facing up. Look to the right and drop both knees to the left. Just make sure your top knee is in line with the bottom knee. This will ensure you feel the stretch. On an inhale, bring the knees back up. Exhale, switch sides. Look to the left and drop the knees to the right. Inhale, bring the knees back into your chest. Hug the knees with your arms and bring your forehead to your knees. Take a big inhale and squeeze everything into a tight little ball. Exhale, release, sprawl open. Shavasana, you've arrived. Close your eyes. Soften the jaw. Start to let your breath deepen, slowing the pace. Shavasana is about cultivating an ability. To be able to let go of your responsibilities and obligations, your stresses and worries. To put your whole life on pause so that your body can truly rejuvenate and recharge from the inside out. Shavasana is about being the witness to your body and mind versus the participant. To let go of all hesitation and reservation, to find moments of contentment, free of movement, and truly letting your body rest undisturbed. Soak it in. Let patience overcome you. your mind and body free. Give in to resting and let go of resisting. Take your arms above your head, interlace the fingers and flip the palms inside out and point through your toes. Roll to your right side and come to sitting. Take your hands at your heart center. Yoga is a constant evolution towards happiness and contentment. It is a practice of physicality and meditation, healing to the body, mind, and spirit. Thank you for your energy and effort today. I salute you. Namaste.